It's time to make the aluminum bronze smithing hammer. One could even say it's hammer time. Stupid, stupid joke. So here's the hammer design. I, I printed up a split pattern. Basically what I did here, I looked at uh, Roy at Christ Centered Ironworks. That's a YouTube channel. Outside of YouTube, he's a professional blacksmith, like full time. So I just looked at the hammer that he uses most of the time for stuff and straight up copied it. Because, uh, you know, he's a professional. He should know what he's doing. I have no idea, so I'm just going to copy the professional. You can see I printed it with draft on all the faces. That way I'll be able to get this out of the sand easily. And this handle thing, I'm going to be using a core for that. That's what these are for. Basically, you know, you stick them together, stuff it full of your core, and then when you lift off, you have your core. You ram these up in the sand, then you remove this, and you have this kind of handle shape hole. You stick this sand, the, the core, in that hole. And then when you cast, you'll get kind of the shape of the hammerhead with a hole through the middle. You gouge out all the sand, and boom, hammerhead. Because I cannot drill through aluminum bronze. It's too hard. I think I need to sand this edge. I plan ahead all the time. Yeah, that's smoother. Shoo, sure looks cruddy though from the sand. Another important casting feature, these edges are all rounded slightly. And that's something that you usually do in patterns, the, the outside and inside edges also. Uh, but I can do it in the modeling program and then just print it to fit. So that's what I did. Now the sand, which some idiot put all the way up here, even though it's super heavy. This time I'm not going to use all these runners. Uh, I'm just going to use risers and try to cut the gates. So that's the plan. So in the bottom flask here, I'm only going to have this one. This is a split pattern. So what you do is you put this down, ram it up, flip it over, stick this on top, ram it up with these in there. Then remove it, remove these from each side of the sand, and then there you go. You got your pattern. But before I do that, what I have to do is I have to make sure that when I put these together, they will stay in the same place, because right now they're just going to slide all over. So I need to attach them together and drill some locating pinholes. And I know what you're thinking. Why didn't you put those in when you made the model? And then they would just print in there. Well, uh, in response to that, where were you when I was doing this? Hmm? Hmm? Because that was a really good idea. I totally should have done that. But let's let her rip. Boom. Not very centered, but good enough. Hmm. How am I going to get sand from going in there? Obviously duct tape. You might be asking, will duct tape mess up my ability to get this pattern out of the sand? Well, we are going to find out together, won't we? Pretty, pretty makeup. Now, they always tell you you want a little bit of space between the pattern and the wall. But remember, this is going to have a core in it, so this isn't going to have any metal. So I can put it right up against the wall, not like super close, but reasonably so. And know that metal is not going to be in there, hopefully. Make sure I have space along here, and then put the, the risers here, but in, in the other side of the flask. Remember, parting surface, down. I totally didn't almost forget that just now. Now the sand feels different in the cold. This is oil bonded sand. I know people tell me water bonded sand, the normal like water green sand, wet sand, that stuff can freeze. And you can't really use it when it's frozen. Wedding ring off. A little late in the game, but eh. It's never too late to try to protect your marriage or your safety. And yes, ruining your wedding ring, that is a danger to your safety and your marriage. Locating pins. Cool, glad that worked. And what I'm going to do with these, I'm going to push them into the sand underneath. <clears throat> Using manly strength. Boom. Oh. All right, then. It just lifted the hammer out. Cutting a gate that I'm aware you can't see on that camera. I'm sorry. And another gate also aware you can't see on the camera. I'm sorry. Remove hammer. Cutting these gates, hopefully you can see it on the camera. Before I set it back down, it's core time! I generally use something called sodium silicate for cores. I don't have any sodium silicate, so I'm just going to use Petrobon and hope it's sticky enough. A couple of clamps to hold it together. Remember this dowel from like a few minutes ago? It's hitting my overhead lighting, making a clang noise. Hope that works. 
That should go without saying though. I hope all of this works. Never made a hammer before, never made a hammer handle before, never done a core before, if I'm honest. Not like this anyway. Give it a couple wraps for good luck. Boom, oh look at that. Looks beautiful. Looks beautiful. You can even see the print lines. Cool. Now the reason people use sodium silicate, uh oh, this is too long. I can just cut off the part that I screwed up. It's like I never screwed it up. You expose sodium silicate to carbon dioxide and it gets harder. And that's nice because you kind of need the core to, to hold up to some strength. Fortunately, Petrobond is very sticky and I'm very shaky. Wow, still shaky. But see, that's how it kind of goes in. And the idea is now the metal will flow around that and I'll have that sized hole right through the middle. I think we got away with not using the right kind of sand for that. Let's try this. Huh, I suspect the sand in this top flask is shifting downward just a little bit. <clears throat> but it feels very secure, so we're going to ignore all that and move ahead anyway, because I don't have time to do it again. The sun is setting. Of course, I need my flask protection wall. This basically just prevents the, the metal from flowing over and burning my flask again. Okay, since that's going on full fires of death mode, it probably won't be very long for the aluminum bronze to melt. Uh, if you remember, when I did the testing, I uh, had the thing clamped in the vise and I was hammering the crap out of it, and I was able to make a chip in the ingot. And that, to me, said it's too brittle, because if I can make a chip and intense stress testing, hammering with it forever is going to be, you know, about the same. So what I did, I threw in another ingot of copper. Hopefully that will lower the aluminum content just enough that it won't be brittle. The more aluminum you have in it, the harder it is, but the more brittle it is. So it's kind of a balance. So I threw in a little more copper. Some people were mentioning in the comments that my uh, copper aluminum ratio was probably not 10%. Uh, the way I mixed it, it was probably more like eight and a half to 9%. Well, I think there was some, some contamination, some aluminum in the crucible where I melted the copper. So the copper ingots might have a little aluminum in them already. So that, that might have pushed the, uh, the percentage up. Uh, the, adding the copper will hopefully lower the content, although rest assured, I didn't measure any of that, so I have no idea how much it would have lowered it. And the copper that I threw in might have also been contaminated with a little bit of aluminum. So uh, yeah, this is kind of a crapshoot, but uh, it should be fun. Once it's, once it's out of there, I'll clean up the, the casting, and then I'll put a handle on there, and we'll see how it works. I've never done any of this before though, so uh, fingers crossed. Also, yes, you can see my breath. It's cold. Uh, winter is finally here. I can simultaneously be freezing cold and burning, though, when I'm next to a furnace, so that's fun. Ready for the obligatory point into the furnace shot? Again, melting quite quickly. Quickly, quickly. Here we go, pouring into the hole with the arrow. Taking all of it. Uh-oh, did I, did I melt enough aluminum bronze? I sure hope so. I did lose quite a bit again to the dross. It looks about full enough. Hard to see in there because it's still glowing, but it did get all the way through. All right, well, I went to pick it up to put it on here to remove it, and this happened. The sand stayed down there. So I haven't seen it yet, but it is under this. So here we go, now or never. Oh no, chunks of sand falling. This is going to be a nightmare to clean up. It's still warm. Oh, look at that. Okay, we got a little pitting, or we got a little sinkage here. Ooh, that's, that's toasty. Toasty warm. Save me, spring clamp. It worked! Hooray, hammer! Alright, I will clean up and rejoin you later. Ow, jeez, that's really hot. Toasty. Burn me. Well, some idiot forgot to hit the record button when he was cleaning it up. So here's me work hardening the faces. The way these cooled off very slowly in the mold, they're still very annealed. I don't really know if it's hardened the face. It didn't really do anything. Probably because it was already pretty tough. But it certainly helped me relieve the stress from not hitting the record button. Guess I need to make a handle. That stems the rules. Let's see what we got. Uh, I got a stack of wood. Shh. Walnut, yes. Walnut is good. Get screwed, Poplar. Maple, yeah, maple, I like maple, but I, I, I guess we'll do maple. Ripsaw! Wait, no, measure once, cut once. 
I didn't measure at all. Cannot find the measure, so I'm just going to wing it. Do, 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 middle ish. Middle ish. Good a straight edge as any. You know, I've seen projects that didn't involve any actual measuring tapes. It was about making like a, a comfortable stool using just like body measurements, like a span and a cubit and that kind of thing. So you make it with your own body measurements, and the idea is it would end up a comfortable height and all that stool for you. And it didn't really matter if it was perfect. Ta da! I'm gonna glue it on either side with this maple. And when it dries, I'm gonna cut out a hammer handle. I think I'm gonna cut it a little too long. Like, I'm gonna make it this full length. And then uh, I'll, I'll, you know, shape it and then put a head, put the head on it, put the hammer head on it. And then I'll use it a bit and figure out what's the maximum length I care to use it ever and then chop it off. Good plan? Maybe? I'm just winging this, so give me a break. I've never made a hammer before. Definitely never made a hammer handle. I'm guessing that's gonna be way too thick. But, yeah, that's fine. Whatever, I'll, I'll make it work. Do, 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 glue, 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 glue. What is the proper length for a hammer handle anyway? Like, how do you figure that out? Probably shorter than I'm gonna make it. But that's good. Remember, when you're doing these kind of things, you can always remove more wood. You can't stick it back on there. Well, you can glue it. And with metal, you can weld it. So, I guess that old saying is kind of crap, but it's, it's easier to take it off. It's been a while since I've broken out the spring clamps. Bet they were getting lonely over there. See, the cool thing with spring clamps is as the glue dries, it kind of shrinks. And the spring clamps are exerting a force, so as it shrinks, they'll just continue squeezing down. If you use, like, those screw clamps and everything shrinks together, the clamp is suddenly loose. But these, these maintain proper tension? Compression? Whatever. Clampage. Their clampage is good. Naturally, I'm not going to let it get away with only a few clamps. I don't own a million spring clamps, so I can only use two of them. I should probably amend that. I don't own a million spring clamps. I just own too many of them. I'm staggering them so you don't end up with a, a condition where the wood gets wet on one side because of the glue and ends up cupping. I'm clamping the two edges down so the joint hopefully will be nice and tight when I start removing the, the sides. Now, of course, if I wasn't lazy, I would have shaved this off. I could do it just on both sides all the way up, but I was lazy. This is sort of a similar clamping method to when I used to make longbows, because when you have laminated pieces on a longbow, it really matters that the glue joint is absolutely secure the whole way. So any weak points will kind of be like a crack in a thing, where the little weak point concentrates all the stress and kaboom! Explosion! In the interest of speeding this along a bit, I'm just going to summarize how I made the handle. Basically, I took that plank you saw, I shaved it so it was, like, square-ish, then I traced out the shape that I wanted to cut of the pin that goes through the hammerhead, then I cut that out, trimmed it a bit with some chisels, then I used a spoke shave to kind of make the square handle into a round handle, then sanded it. No need to go through hours and hours of this because all of you watching are probably smart enough to just go buy a hammer handle because they sell them at the store for, like, very little money. It's totally worth it. Finished handle, except not not finished. I'm gonna put oil on it. Uh, let's see. Let's try to make this fit. Drum roll. Hmm. There we go. This is too long. Obviously, this this feels really awkward. Pretty pretty stuck on there though. How how do you figure out how long to make a hammer anyway? Like that's that's too short. No. That feels, that feels like a good place. Maybe right about here? You'll see some hammers, uh, they'll be kind of thick by the handle and they'll get really skinny up here, framing hammers. Uh, but I kind of wanted it to be the same thickness the whole way, just in case I wanted to hold it in a different area. Also, it's, you know, kind of chilly out here and I don't want to stand here shaving this down only to have it get too thin and then break later. So yeah, I'll, I'll just stick with this. Right about there. But yeah, that still feels just a hair longer than I want it to be. But that's fine. Like this, right here. There. That's that's a good comfy. Yeah. That's this feels. This makes me feel manly. All right. Let's see pins. We need to pin this. I've seen someone make pins with a rip saw before, and they bragged about it as an accomplishment. So I'm gonna see if I can do that. There. This is kind of like a wedged mortise and tenon, but uh, then I remembered I've never done a wedged mortise and tenon. So that's not going to make me feel any better. Slight change, this needs to be shorter. Boom. Shorter. 
I've already told you I've never done this before, right? Don't need to give you any excuses then. You're well aware. Two pins, there, full width. Tappy tap tap. There, had to get a little aggressive with the tappy tap taps. Turn into whack, whack, whack. Yeah, that's, that's pretty thick. Linseed oil doesn't like the cold. It'll go on whatever wood I say it'll go on and it'll like it. It's going on real nice. Actually, no, it's going on like syrup. I may have to take this inside to finish. And I will uh, show you when it's done. Just kidding. No, I, I'm going to show you in a second. But before I do, I want to remind you that this was done in collaboration with another YouTube channel, SW Dweeb. He also made an aluminum bronze hammer. His video should have posted the same time this one did, so I want you to go over there, watch his, and uh, check it out. No need to tell us which one you like better. Uh, and I'm not just saying that because I've seen his hammer already and uh, I wouldn't vote for mine. So yeah, just, just watch them. Just watch them both and enjoy. Enjoy. No need to make it a competition. No need at all. I, I, it, it was a good time. It was a good time, right? It's, it's, it's how you feel that matters. It's not who wins. But I want to say thank you to SW Dweeb. This was fun. Uh, and we should do more stuff like this, right? Ta-da! My very first hammer and handle and time putting a handle on a hammer. Now that I got this, I'm one step closer to having everything I need to actually forge some metal. What should I make next? Forge something? Another hammer? More casting? Let me know in the comments.